Welcome to Case of the Week. It's a new series I'm starting, and this week we're talking about Sequel Volvulus. I'm Dr. Dan Koval. Let's jump into the case. Here we have a scout view, a topogram from a CT scan of the abdomen showing this dilated loop of colon within the central abdomen, and the vector is pointing up towards the left upper quadrant. That combined with the fact that you're seeing dilated small bowel loops proximal to this dilated colonic loop tells you that we're dealing with a sequel volvulus. There's also a nasogastric tube with its tip terminating in the stomach. Let's look at the CT scan itself. So this coronal soft tissue view shows you the dilated loop of colon there, and when we switch to lung windows, what else do we see? Well, there's extensive pneumoperitoneum, all this free air outlined bowel loops and outlining the falciform ligament here. So that tells you that we're dealing with a perforated hollow viscous. Now when we switch back to soft tissue windows, we see all these foci of gas here in a curvilinear distribution. And this is actually gas within the wall of the dilated cecum indicating pneumatosis. And that's very suspicious for cecal ischemia. We can see that again as we scroll through all these foci of gas within the wall of this dilated cecal loop. We see again a few foci of free air throughout the mesentery also underlying the liver and more extensively overlying the liver deep to the diaphragm. Now when we scroll ahead too, notice that there's this twisting of the mesentery and that's the site of the obstruction causing the cecal volvulus. We also see these dilated loops of small bowel that are fluid filled and these were not as evident on the topogram and that's because on x-ray and scout views we see gas filled small bowel much more readily. Fluid filled small bowel can be somewhat occult on x-ray. Now looking at a sagittal view we again see this gas within the cecal wall indicating pneumatosis and the non-dependent gas here indicating pneumoperitoneum free air. Let's look at the axial view. So here's an axial soft tissue window. We see the free air, but we see it much more extensively when we look at the lung window. We also see that falciform ligament outlined, as well as a few foci of gas here deep to the liver. Returning to this soft tissue window, we see again that dilated cecum here with its curvilinear gas within the wall indicating pneumatosis. And you may argue, well, Dr. Koval, how do we know that this isn't just gas within the lumen that's trapped between this fluid and a normal cecal wall? And that's a good question because that can be tricky to differentiate at times because you can have physiologic intraluminal gas trapped between the fluid and the colonic wall. A clue here is that the wall looks a little thin and the gas is unusually curvilinear, but what often helps is if you switch to lung windows again, you can see that that gas continues within the non-dependent aspect of the cecum, indicating that it is truly within the wall, consistent with pneumatosis and highly suspicious for ischemia. Check out again all that free air that we're seeing much better on the lung window series. As we scroll down, we continue to see more of the same, the pneumatosis within the colonic wall and the pneumoperitoneum indicating perforated hollow viscous. There's all that dilated fluid-filled bowel. We see some areas of mesenteric stranding. And then here's the beginning of that twisting of the mesentery, which is the point of the obstruction for the cecal volvulus. Now let's return to that topogram image because I really want to highlight how important the scout view is when you're evaluating bowel pathology on CT scan. Instead of rushing in and looking at the CT images right away, it's very helpful to look at the scout image because that may give you an immediate clue as to what you're dealing with. And in this case, just looking at the scout tells you that you're seeing this dilated colonic loop extending to the left upper quadrant preceded by dilated small bowel loops tells you that you're dealing with a cecal volvulus. If this was a sigmoid volvulus, the obstruction would be more distal in the left pelvis usually and the vector would classically be pointing up towards the right upper quadrant and because it's a distal large bowel obstruction you'd see dilated colonic loops leading up to the dilated sigmoid loop as opposed to the small bowel. And another important finding on this topogram is actually the pneumatosis. Because we're seeing the bowel loops outlined so well so clearly that tells you that there's gas on either side of the bowel. And what sign is that known as? Yes, regular sign. And you can see that also here on the CT scan why we're seeing it so well. There's the bowel wall where normally we have gas within the lumen that's fine but then we also have gas outside of it and that's what gives it such a sharply demarcated appearance on the scout view or x-ray you're seeing normal anatomic structures right you're seeing just normal bowel loops but you're seeing them unusually well normally we don't see them this sharply and that's because it's outlined by gas on either side all right so let's review some of those key points for cecal volvulus so it's a twisting of the cecum around the mesentery causing a proximal large bowel obstruction and numbers to remember the cecum is usually less than nine centimeters in diameter whereas the rest of the the colon is less than six centimeters. So a cecum that exceeds nine centimeters is suspicious for obstruction. And use the topogram, I can't stress that enough. Classically, the vector will be pointed towards the left upper quadrant, but what's more important is probably what bowel is dilated proximally. If it's small bowel, it's likely a cecal volvulus. If it's large bowel, it's likely a sigmoid volvulus. And look for complications. So pneumoperitoneum will indicate bowel perforation. You'll see regular sign and the falciform ligament sign. If you're dealing with an upright x-ray, you'll see subdiaphragmatic free air, but the regular sign is particularly helpful for those supine x-rays or topogram images. Also look for pneumatosis, 
which will indicate cecal ischemia, gas within the bowel wall. And that concludes case of the week number one, cecal volvulus. Thanks for watching. You can catch these lectures each week by subscribing to our podcast, YouTube channel, or by following us on social media. Until next time, radiology is life.